we see a beautiful garden. We see many flowers. Yes. And we smell the fragrance. Yes. It's so like this. Then again, we go to uh, we <laughs> we go to see vast expanse of water yeah. to be to expand our to expand our consciousness. We look at a mountain and we try to raise our consciousness as high as the mountain. So for inspiration, you go to various places. When you go to get inspiration, something within us responds to this inspiration and that is what we call aspiration. So, but every day, every hour, we cannot have most delicious meal. But we do know that there are particular uh, restaurants that will supply us with delicious meal. Yes. So we go there, but we either it is um, not uh, possible for us for various reasons, or we don't feel like uh, uh, going to the place. So inspiration is there yes. everywhere. Yes. Aspiration deep within us. It is up to us to bring to the fore. But if we do not avail our avail ourselves of this opportunity, who can and who will do it for us? This moment, I am a good person. Before you leave this house, you, before you leave this building, you will argue with yourself. How do I know that he is a nice person? How do I know? Then, third moment, you will argue with yourself. Uh, why do I have to know whether he is good or bad? It is none of my business. Now, you are contradicting in five minutes your own personal precious opinion. But once you feel someone as good, in the depths of your heart, you feel something good or the inside them, then you try to build upon that feeling. He is a good person, perhaps he is kind, perhaps he is nice, or he is compassionate, he is sympathetic. Yes. So these divine qualities you try to bring into your own system and yes. then you increase it. So understanding is not the right process from our point of view, but ah. feeling is the right process. I am a seeker. I am seeking and at the same time, you know, trying to offer the search to people. See, my seeking, you can call it capacity or quality. You know, I enter into a garden and there I see beautiful flowers. Then I try to collect a few flowers and then try to offer to those flowers to people who are going to be inspired by the flowers. So yesterday, uh, I played a few instruments and I meditated uh, after each instrument I played. So, as you all know, music is a universal language. I do not know a word of this country. So it is language I do not know. And perhaps if I had spoken in Bengali, nobody would have understood my mother tongue. But it is just because it was music, and music has a universal appeal, where perhaps some people felt in the inmost recess of their heart, and then from the comments that we yesterday collected, there was uh, ample uh, response from people. So, uh, I am a truth seeker and God lover. Uh, and. I know there are many, many countless people who are in the same boat. So when I give concerts, it is like a family gathering. You know, all those people, they are all my brothers and sisters. We belong to the same family. So I'd like the Christmas time when family, when all the members gather together, I try to do the same. That here I have come with inspiration and it is not I, it is not only I who have the inspiration to offer in silence people who are listening to me, they are also inspiring me. It is mutual. I am playing and if people are receptive, if people are, are feeling something, their very feeling is a source of inspiration to me. It is give and take. I am giving through music or through my silence and people who who are receptive, who are uh, feeling something in the depth of their heart, also who are uh, giving me in return, mutual give and take. So this is what I do. Wherever I go, 
I try to offer my inspiration, my aspiration, at the same time collect from them their inspiration and aspiration. This is how I feel that we can establish a oneness world family. Here in Sweden, uh, people are not generally aware of such a thing as deeper states of consciousness, deeper states of, of uh, introversion. And um, in our magazine we try to show that it is possible, <coughs> but in a very elementary way. And uh, I wonder if you can um, you have much experience from Western people and the kind of difficulties that we meet when we try to, to go inwards. And I wonder if you could speak a little upon that, the difficulties one meets, and also um, what you would like about the deepening, what that is like, the deepening of the consciousness. Mm -hmm. Du menar att, att att fördjupa sig själv, ja, att gå det, in det, det, hur vi ska överkomma svårigheter. Ja, yes. How the western person can overcome the difficulties going inwards. How, what our difficulties are and how we can overcome them in the western world. There are, let us put it in a very rough way, there are two worlds, East and the West. Well, so instead of saying East and West, let us put heart and the mind. The Western world also has a heart and has a mind. But now, Western world, unfortunately, Western world has many, many, many good qualities. Dynamism. And then uh, uh, alertness, and then at the time of need to throw heart and soul. There are many, many good qualities Western world has. But one major difficulty, I don't want to call it a deplorable mistake or fault, far from it. Difficulty lies in the Western world. The Western world wants to see the truth um, piece by piece, not in totality. And um, you see, um, um, the, here the problem lies, the difficulty lies. When we use the mind, immediately, we see if there are ten flowers, the mind will try to count one, two, three, four, like this. It is separating the ten flowers. But when you use the, use the heart, heart does not count the flowers. Heart immediately feels the beauty, fragrance of all the flowers have entered into the heart and have become, those, uh, these flowers have become part and parcel of the heart. So as long as we take a thing, a, an individual, part by part, we will not be satisfied. See, it may, somebody looks at me, and if he sees my hair, there's no hair, mm -hmm. gray hair. Immediately, mistake has started from there, from the beginning. Then if he looks at my nose or face, or somebody will simply say, this is, this is he, oh, he's, he, how does he, he part of people are all telling lies. Look, he has no muscle part, he has no physique, but he lives uh, hundreds of pounds. So perhaps he has got quite a few flatterers who are writing everything false and just saying. So now look at it, look at my body, how much decept, my body is uh, showing, um, you, you can say deception. My whole body betrays, I am not a weightlifter, but if it is true, yeah, but again, if you want to see, I can prove it. Even at this moment, I'll be able to lift anybody in this room, I'll be able to lift up. Easily, easily, I'll be able to lift up. 
but look at me and immediately no hair this and that. Now there are so many ways you will be disheartened when you look at me. If you want to look at a bodybuilder, weightlifter, look at me, you are disheartened. Then if you look at my entire physique, then you are not satisfied, so many defects you think. But instead of looking at my hair, ball head or my arms, muscle power, if you just from there, if you are in a meditative, I use the term, meditative consciousness or prayerful consciousness, you are entering into my heart, not here or there, right here. There you are feeling, you immediately will feel my love for you, my oneness with you, my genuine love for you, my oneness with you, you will feel. Then if, I if you feel my love, my love for you, then what else do you need? What gives you joy? Love or my lack of hair or my lack of physical beauty or physical muscle power? So here is the mistake that Western world makes. Western world soon as soon here is defective, here is defective, everything. But if you enter into the Eastern world, let us not pull Eastern of wrong, wrong, heart world. In the heart world, my heart world, your heart world. Immediately you'll feel my love, my love for you, and your love for me. A child, look at the mother. Child is blind. Child is deaf. But mother's love for the child and the child's love for the mother make them one. When the child cries for something, mother's heart immediately melts. Whereas the other child, he has got perfect eyes, he has got perfect vision, perfect everything. But in which way the other one is superior, one who has got better vision and all that? No, mother, is, mother feels the heart, her oneness heart with the one who is God, whose vision is not good, whose, uh, who is, whose body, whose limbs are uh, not in proper shape, impaired, but no, it is the heart. Mother's heart for the child, the so-called defective, we call it defective, mother is not taking him as defective, mother is seeing it, the, the child's heart full of love and mother's own heart full of love. So here, when you use the, our heart, Love comes first. Oneness comes. In love and oneness, there is no, no defect. There can be no defect. I accept my dog. Dog is barking and everything dog is barking. But as soon as I see the dog, in spite of his barking, my love overflows. Because of my love, I see the heart of my dog. We need the dog also. No matter if I don't feed him on time, 6 o'clock I have to be, the, the love of the dog is not decreasing or diminishing, even if I give him the food at 8 o'clock, because they, we have conquered each other's heart. So, if we make our approach, if we have a different outlook in life, if we can approach each and every individual on the strength of our heart's oneness, then we will be happy. The, our Philosophy uh, starts with heart, it continues, and it will forever uh, it will continue. It, is, it starts only the expansion of heart is our philosophy. A child's love in the beginning is only father and mother. It starts with the mother, let us say, because mother takes care of it, mother and father, then brothers and sisters. He see how the love is expanding. First with the parents, then with the brothers and sisters, then dear ones, relatives, then the village, expanding. Then it comes to the town, city, and then the country. How is it? Then it becomes from national to international. How the love is expanding. Now we think of, I was born in Chidagan, Bangladesh. Then I came to South India, and I thought of India. Before it was, let us say, all children. Then it became India. Then I came to America, my love. But then now see the whole, whole world. How I'm expanding. It is not that I'm becoming national or international figure, from, far from it. But my feeling for God the creation, God the creator is above, 
God the creation. We are all God the creation. You are all God the creation. We are all God the creation. So my, how I'm expanding my love from my parents onward, I came now here. I have genuine love for Sweden. So see, I have uh, I've been to practically all over the world. So it is my love power that I'm expanding, not mind power. If as as I said before, if I use my mind power, I will find hundreds of countless mistakes in my own country and forgive me, I have again mistakes in Sweden and wherever I go. But here I have not come to judge anybody. I have not come here to judge your country, to judge an individual or no, far from it. I have come here to love the soul, the heart and the country itself. And I do hope at the same time I, I'm sure at the same time you know, the country, the soul, uh, uh, Sweden, uh, are also loving. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, could I go on? Yes, please. Um, it is, um, it is a universal fact what you spoke, and I think everybody in their heart would. Uh, agree, even if one is not um, 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 even if one is an ordinary human being with just in an ordinary state of consciousness. But would you um, for many people it's it's difficult to reach that heart awareness. And what would you say? If one wants to take the first steps, um, how would you advise to go mm. about it? Right. <laughs> now, it is like a course. In the beginning, we learn the alphabet. A, B, C, we learn it. Then, we, gradually, gradually, we, we go to school, kindergarten school, and then we go to uh, the college, university, and even then it is not enough. Go to the libraries. Knowledge uh, never, the uh, acquisition of knowledge never ends. So here also we start, as you said, at the very beginning to start with, we we try to get an inspiration to feel our love for for the world, the rest of the world. I look at a flower. I look at a flower. No matter how bad I am. This moment, say, undivine thoughts are coming that I want. I am jealous of you, and I am. Uh, um, uh, I am. I am trying to make you feel that I am superior to you. All kinds of thoughts are coming, but when I am looking at the flower, I am getting some joy. My mind is thinking of you and saying that you know I want to defeat you. In this, I want to defeat you. This, and but I, mine is working. Mine is thinking of you and saying that you know, I want to defeat you. This, but the heart, what is the heart is doing? Heart is looking at the beauty of the flower. Heart is getting the fragrance of the flower. So now, here is the difference. I will look at the flower for five seconds, then one minute, then two minutes, then I'm getting tremendous joy. This. Then I shall look, I will try to look at nature's beauty. I will go and sit at the foot of a tree. See, at the foot of a tree, many good people can take rest, again many bad people, whoever wants to. Tree, if I am a bad person and I want to come and take shelter at the foot of a tree, she will not ask me, you go from here, you are a very bad person, I don't need you, I don't want you, you are such a bad person. No, I go there. And you are a saint, and this, see, you are also welcome, we are all. So now I will be at the seat at the foot of a tree and try to get all the good qualities, patience. Main thing is that it's countless leaves, flowers, fruits. And so many things. Now, when we have ten dollars, we become 
proud and haughty. Then we have only hundred dollars, nobody can approach us because we are so we are very rich, richer than the richest. But look at the flower, look at the tree. When it bears flowers, when it has fruits, it comes down. Our way, if you have something, immediately go up. Immediately beneath our dignity to talk to you because I'm so rich. But when the trees are full of flowers, fruits and everything, trees bending down, humility. Now, here is the example of God. He is omniscient, He is omnipotent, He is omnipresent, He is everything. But how does He look at His creation? He bends like a mother, mother is so tall, father is so tall. Mother will bend and put on, help the child to put on his shoes. Mother will say, it is beneath my dignity, I am so, I am older than you, I am your mother, I am greater than you in every way. Why do you have to come down and help you uh, in lacing the shoes? No, mother gets tremendous joy to touch the feet of, of, her, of her child. So here, the tree is teaching us humility founded upon oneness. The he tree is bending down, then we can climb up and we can pluck fruits and it, eat to our heart's content. So all see here, when we enter into a garden, what happens? When you sit at the flower, when you look at the flower, and when you sit at the fruit, at the fruit of a tree, then we can look, we can go and sit uh, in front of a vast expanse, water, right in front, in front of uh, a sea or ocean or even uh, a river. We can, even if we don't get anything, let us go and st sit in front of a swimming pool. The spiritual significance of water is consciousness. So now, consciousness is of paramount importance in your life, in your life, in my life, in his life, in all, everybody's life consciousness. Is a consciousness has to be awakened, consciousness has to be elevated to the highest. So, wherever you get inspiration, we will go. In the evening, we we'll look early in the morning when the day breaks, we we'll look at the sky for freshness, purity. And this freshness, purity that we are seeing in dawn, we have to try to feel it inside our heart. When you look at a flower, the beauty, we have to feel that inside our heart, the same flower. After us, you have to feel the heart itself. Heart is the flower itself. Heart is flower. Heart is not holding a flower inside it. No. Heart has become the flower. And that flower, that heart flower has fragrance in infinite measure. And God created that flower and enjoying the beauty and fragrance of this flower. If the gardener is responsible for the plant and for the flower, he is, let us say, he is the creator. And the creator, when he looks at his creation, the beautiful flower, when he enjoys, and he's so happy because it is creation. Here is the oneness of creator uh, and the creation. When he he worked uh, for a few months with the plants, he was the creator. Then when you see the flower, his own creation, he's so happy. He feels his own identification, oneness, identification, oneness with the flower. So here, the creator and the creation have become oneness. So wherever you get inspiration, we have to go in order to become a better person. Inspiration, no, again, inspiration is give and take. It is reciprocal. You know, as I said 15 minutes ago, I am offering my inspiration to you and you are in audience. Your silence acceptance is also inspiration, the source of inspiration to me. It is not that I have come uh, to Sweden to give you inspiration. No, I came. This, and again, your very presence in the audience the audience itself was an inspiration to me. The, it, it goes simultaneously. I give and you accept. When you are accepting, definitely you are giving me what I need. I hope I'm making it clear to you. So, so this is how we start at the very beginning. As a child learns the alphabet A, B, C, 
So if I want to uh, get joy from life, if I want to offer inspiration to anybody, then I have to go. Anything. And one is family. It is, it, it is like, you know, I am hungry. If I am hungry, then I will enter into my kitchen. I will not go into my, uh, in, uh, go to the um, living room. Right place. Inside my kitchen is the refrigerator inside the room. But when I have to study, do some, then I will go into my living room. Where I, each place. So here also, when we want to feel love, um, newness, fullness, we have to go into the right room, heart room. But if you knock at an, another door, then it will be a mistake. So what we want from life? If it's, this is the question. And if the answer is love and oneness, peace, then I will say the heart door is the right door. Heart room is the right room. If I may put the same question in a practical way then, do you mean then that uh, a simple way of st starting to meditate could be to just get inspiration of anything that gives you joy? That's absolutely. The joy in infinite measure is the crown of spirituality. We have to know, see the difference between joy and pleasure. Life of pleasure and life of real joy are not the same thing. So you are saying joy, we use the term delight in a spiritual way, we use excess here, delight. So the more delight we can feel in the depths of our heart, the higher we go and the the deeper meaning of life we discover in our search for truth for God. So joy right from the beginning. If I get joy while studying the alphabet, then I will continue. That is if I don't get joy, who wants to learn A after A, B, why should it be B after A? It can be C. I start arguing with my mother. And what can poor mother do? There ends my study. But just because I believe my mother happily that after A it is B and C and all, see, I learned the alphabet and how many books I studied eventually. So here I'll see if I get little joy from a flower, from a tree, from, from, uh, <coughs> from the ocean, from the, from the mountain then I will be inspired to spend hours in my heart garden. What is the difference then between joy and pleasure? Art pleasure the life, when you use the term pleasure life, pleasure life, it is life, then it becomes a life of comfort. Vital pleasure and then and, and we neglect our duty, we lower consciousness. Whereas if you get joy, real joy, if I'm getting joy, from a garden, early in the morning, I'll go and run, run to the garden to be with the flowers, with the inspired. But if I don't get joy, if I'm in the world of pleasure, it is six o'clock, and who wants to get up early? It's too early, and let me get up at eight o'clock now. It is also too early, nine o'clock is also too early, it's 10 o'clock, and I'm doing the whole day and that day. <laughs> The deeper states of introversion are uh, you leave the sense world behind. You, the sense world disappears. Would you care to speak about, um, about what happens as you go deeper inwards? Now, there are two ways. When you go deep within, when you go deep within, we can enter into the world of, let us say, nirvana, where there is no thought, extinction of thought completely. There is no dance of nature, 
Nature, nature is all the time dancing here, there. Sometimes you don't like the dance, sometimes you do like. All the time movement, activity, we call it nature's dance. So now when you go deep within, there is one way there, you know, we don't see the activity. Motion is all, it, everything is ceased. It is all calm and quiet, tranquility. Now, if one wants, one can do so. But again, some people like both in the sensual let us activity. They want both the silence aspect and the sound aspect. And let us say in the West we give what we are inclined to give more, pay more attention to the sound aspect of life. And in the East, say uh, down the sweep of centuries, we give more importance to the silence aspect. But it is, we give, but now again in the East also there is all this, what is uh, they're threatening, war is, war is threatening, it is, there is no such thing as East and West now. But uh, if you put mind and heart, it solves our problem. Mind still wants superiority. I have to be one step ahead of you, then it is peace. Peace means I have to be one step ahead of you. If you walk with me, side by side, no peace. I have to lord it over you. As long as you are, I am the boss and you are the slave, then there is peace. But I will keep you as my slave, but whatever you want, I will give you. But you have to know that you are my slave, then there is peace. You want money, I will give you. You want this, that, I will give you. But you have to be one step behind me. Then only mind is happy. The heart will say, no, I will carry you here inside my heart. If I turn this side, you will go with me. If I turn that side, you will go with me. Wherever I go, I will carry you in the very depths of my heart. So this, no, this is not the right attitude. The, the other attitude is that I have to be a little ahead of you, then peace. But the heart said no. I will have peace only if I feel your presence inside my heart. And you also, if I feel your presence. Otherwise, why? Why should I be one step behind you and make myself feel that I have the same same joy? I have the, no. I will be in the depths of your heart. You be in the depths of my heart. Then we'll get joy. So, no. To come back to your question, yeah, the, the, when there is activity. It is activity, the sense we are observing with our senses. Now, we can be happy with what is happening when this, we are drawing on the strength of our sense perceptions, we are drawing the world, we can be unhappy. And if you go inside and there is no activity there, it is all silent. But now the question comes uh, whether we need both or not. Sometimes we see a peaceful ocean and we are very happy. Again, sometimes we see some uh, um, uh, waves, surges in the sea, we are happy at one. We are getting joy. So life has to be composed of both realities. Now it is up to us when, what we want at what time. This moment when it is when it is night, I go to sleep, I take rest. And when the time comes, when the day breaks, I have to come out of my room and walk. I have to do things. So here sound life and sound, silence life must go together. There should be balance. So when you are in the inner world, it is let us say it is a world of silence. When in the outer world, it is a world of sound. They have to be put together and they have to be well, we have to adjust all. It is evening, it is night, we have to take rest, and it is day, you have to walk. Silence and sound, we have to go to, we have to accept together. So with the sense world, we are accepting this, uh, with the sense, so with our senses we are accepting the sound world, and then when you meditate, dive deep within, we accept the inner world of silence. They must go together. So the meditative consciousness I was able to lift, 
if i am cutting joseph i would be lifting i in my highest consciousness when i lifted 7000 pound at that time i was in my highest deepest consciousness otherwise uh, will i dare to be under uh, 7000 pound will i dare to do anything like that only because i was in a very high state of consciousness and i felt my implicit oneness with this enormous <coughs> weight that to it i went there others will ever dare if I right now with my mind if i th- think of 7000 and my mind will be crushed my i will be uh, uh, i'll i I'll, i'll be full was possible full to be under 7000 pound weight so because of my meditation meditative consciousness when i went into my high deep into my meditation i felt my implicit implicit oneness with this weight that weight i did not at that time feel as 7000 i felt that weight is something a friend of mine and i want to lift a friend of mine and my friend says all that if you want if i have here is a friend of mine and if i want to lift my friends if you want to get joy by lifting me then do it i'm there so <laughs> then <laughs> everything that we do <coughs> um, to inspire people when you do something we have to prepare ourselves first with the inspiration and aspiration i have written so many books it is all based on inspiration and aspiration it is we, each each thought each idea comes from another world now we, we can if we make friends with them if you are my friend then i immediately open my door if you are not my friend then you will not allow me to have an access so when i do something i try to establish my feeling of oneness whether it is weight or poetry or music or painting anything that i do i try to establish my friendship let us put the correct word oneness if i am one with you then if i ask you to do me a favor how will you prevent how will you not listen to me you because of my friendship i am asking and because of your friendship you are you are uh, exigent to listen to me so the same thing anything that we see on a higher scale and on a scale i must say it is all based on my feeling of oneness with the soul with the living entity of that particular This is how you feel one conquers one's en- so-called enemy too, right? To go into the heart and experience the oneness we, on an inner <coughs> plane. We can conquer the enemies not by not by any power, physical power or vital power or mental power. But this is these are all outer. Physically, if you are stronger than me, you cannot conquer me. Vitally, if you are stronger than you cannot conquer me. Mentally, you are stronger than me. So, so what? You are stronger than me. You stay with your physical power. You stay with your vital power, mental power. And, but then there is called psychic power, heart <coughs> power. This power, it, it does not show the power of superiority. The power that shows the uh, superiority cannot conquer. the power that shows oneness mother's love for the child the father, uh, child's love for the mother so this is the heart the power of the heart does not show off does not express superiority the p- heart of the power the power of the heart is only if i have if i have one flower and if you have one flower let us put them together and become two but no if the mind has if the mind has one flower my mind your flower then only you see i will only try to justify that mine is larger mine is more beautiful why do, why do i need yours why do i need yours mine is more beautiful than yours mine is more uh, mine is uh, uh, larger in size problem starts but with the heart power even if yours is small, small mine is big i own mine then so no you can't let us be one then now if i had 
one flower, now I'll be able to say by taking your flowers, two flowers. At that time, I won't say that yours is smaller, I don't need it. It's beneath my dignity to have your, your seed is so defective. No, let us be together, together. Then I say I have now two flowers. So all this expansion will get joy. I have just a little question. <laughs> I wonder <laughs> if it is. You're fine. Um, is it possible to conquer, I mean, to conquer one's own mind or to, I mean, to get it to accept the heart's rule, so to speak? It, it is absolutely possible. It is possible. People have done it. And let us say, if they have not done it, uh, will not fail. We ourselves, it is possible. We think that every day, it is a, a kind of exercise. We take exercise in order to be strong. We eat food, daily three meals, in order to remain physically uh, uh, strong. So here also, um, if we um, start with our heart, in the morning, then our good feelings will enter into different parts of our body. Inside the body is the mind, nowhere else. Inside the body is also the heart. So if we start, you know, if we keep flowers inside one room, a large quantity of flowers, you want to see if you have a large quantity of flowers, you, the room adjacent, you are going to feel little fragrance. And then, if you are here in this room, there are flowers. But believe me, if an occultist is here, we are discussing spiritual matters. If an occultist is, is at this moment, he is in the other room. He is bound to feel our good, uh, something good, in this room, and he will be there. He's, he, with him, there are perhaps undivine people like there, but he is feeling the good vibration he is getting, and like a magnet he is feeling. So if the, everything is conscious, if, if this room was flooded with flowers, you understand, you go into that room, the smell, you have come here, and your whole being is surcharged with the fragrance and the beauty of the flower. Then you go into the other room. There you are carrying the beauty flower, of the flower, the fragrance. So you are inside the heart, garden, so many plants, so many flowers, so, many, so much fragrance. Then it is you, either remain inside your heart or inside your mind. But you have been there first in the heart. Such joy you have got. Then you, where will you? If you want to go there, you go there. Then you enter there, you are getting something. You have carried something of your heart into your mind. So the mind's limitations mind's way of uh, judging others, or mind's way of superiority and inferiority, these things will not be there, because you entered in the hard room first, and you do, and from there, you are carrying the beauty, the fragrance, the light, the light into your, into your mind. So if you do the first thing first, <laughs> then the problem you can solve. But early in the morning, if you enter into your mind, and for hours you remain there, then you will be so tired, so exhausted, you are not going to enter into the heart the whole day. So. We do not say rejection of the mind, but we use the term illumination of the mind. Not rejection, illumination or transforming, illumination. The mind that separates us, we say no, include the way the heart has included. Only we are telling the begging the mind, do not exclude, but include. But the mind finds it difficult. But we are not saying that no, discard the mind, it is a filthy rag, it is far, far from it. But we are only begging the mind to have a different approach to reality. You are not getting joy, then change. This doctor cannot cure you, then let us have another doctor. Who knows what that doctor will be able to cure you. So here, the doctor is here, the illumination. The doctor is transformation of the mind. And this doctor is not the doctor of rejection. No, no, no. Illumination and transformation.
calendar today falls upon the, the Memorial Day of the massive bombing of Tokyo during World War II. How do you feel about, um, about the coincidence of a concert being held on a particular day? My students have said the date, and I gladly accepted it. Now, life has two realities. Destruction and creation. So, when destruction takes place, either intentionally or unintentionally, we feel very sad, very miserable. Then, in the destruction itself, we try to derive benefit, that is to say, not to have the same old experience. We feel that it is our bounden duty to have a new creation. So, so the past is dust. The mistakes that I have made in my past existence, say 40 or 50 years, 50, 60 years ago, I must not <coughs> repeat. I must do something constructive. But I know if I do something constructive, then I will be happy and also I will be one of those who will bring about a new creation. So on the one hand, it is most deplorable experience. Again, on the other hand, we should feel that this experience must not be repeated and that this experience will remind us to have a better way of life, a better way of understanding, a better way of fulfilling our divine task on earth, that is to say, hey, world of harmony, a world of peace, a world of joy. えっと、この破壊が行われた、破壊があった日でありますけれども、創造で、この を今回
what is your main message that you'd like to give to the people of Japan through this concert in Japan? Each time I perform, I dedicate my theme, my peace concert, to someone whom I feel uh, <coughs> responsible for world peace. So this time I have chosen President Golbato to this peace concert I am offering dedicating to him. So this is the message that I will be giving this evening to the audience. Today's peace concert, I am most lovingly and most grateful dedicating to President Gorbachev, whose terrorstrike vision life ended the Cold War and sowed the peace seeds inside the hard garden of the world home for the transformation of the human mind and the perfection of human life. About a year ago, to be precise, 10 months and 23 days ago, President Gorbachev came to visit Japan, beauty's land, a duty's hand. At a dinner in the Emperor's Palace, his oneness heart voiced forth, Our countries and peoples are neighbors. Our ties are many centuries old. There are many historical documents testifying to the mutual attraction between the Russians and the Japanese. At the same dinner, the unparalleled peace lover in him also proclaimed, allow me also to express the wish that the recently chosen name of the era of your majesty's rule, High Sir, which means achievement of universal peace, may also come true in relations between the Soviet Union and Japan. At this uh, crucial time for him, did you have any opinions towards him or advice for him? I don't have, I don't dare to give him any advice. If I pass it, it's like I don't know what you said. Please, sir. Can you pass it to me? For he does not need any advice either from me or from anybody else. What he has inside him, what he has inside him is more than sufficient to prove to the world that he is by far the best political leader plus peace lover on earth. What he has is confidence. This confidence is coming from the very, very depths of his heart in a new way to feel in a new way and to see the world with the new, new eyes, to feel the world with the new heart and to become inseparably one with the success and progress of the new world. So this is the vision of this perestroika. I'm happy to tell you that I have written already three books about him 
and then one more group is in preparation, which will come out shortly. This is my soulful appreciation and prayerful admiration for what he has done for the world at large. How many Eastern countries, Eastern world, how many people on earth, countless people on earth, he has made happy. Yes, he could not make his countrymen happy. And, but he has made countless people in Eastern Europe happy. Today, there is only one German. There is no more East or West. One German liberated Poland, Hungary, Czechoslovakia. I know I have students practically all over the world. To make one student happy is a Herculean task. But in spite of the best, my best intention and my students' best intention to make them happy, I find it so difficult to make happy. Now, only in Germany, how many families were doomed to disappointment, doomed to destruction? He has made them all family members, and now together before they were completely separated. is the no more Berlin Wall, only one heart. So what he has done for humanity is far beyond the imagination of anybody else's achievement. Yes, people have achieved, many people have achieved many, many things, but history will bear witness to the fact that it is one person on earth who has ended the Cold War, who has given us a new hope that we can depend on each other, we can trust each other, we can together walk and run together. There should be no fear, no doubt, no, no. A oneness family. One year ago he came to Japan and he said many, many, many nice things about Japan. And this is also from the very, very depths of his heart. It is not because he happened to be in Japan. Maybe if you come to a new country, you appreciate whether you feel it or not. But in his case, he definitely felt, and it was his most sincere feeling that he expressed in words and he offered to the Japanese. And I'm also happy that he will soon be coming again to Japan, your country, and I'm sure both of both he and Japan will be of great mutual help to each other. How many times have you visited Japan in the past? Okay, you have to answer the question. I've been coming, for the first time when did I come in? 1972? 69. 69. Since 1969, I've been visiting Japan. And each time I come, my appreciation, my admiration, and my love for Japan only increases. In my case, Japan gives me totally different experience. Each time I come, my love 
for Japan only increases. Uh, being a seeker, when I come to Japan, I see Japan as a, the most beautiful flower. For me, Japan is nothing other than the beautiful, most beautiful flower. And what does the flower have? Flower has fragrance and beauty. And this beauty and fragrance Japan offers to the whole world, to the, to the four corners of the globe. Now, as soon as you see a flower, our own good qualities come forward to appreciate the beauty and the fragrance of the flower. We see a flower, before we see the flower, our, our heart, we feel it's not so pure and we, see, and we think of our mind, we think mind is full of fear, doubt, anxiety of many, many, many ugly things inside the mind. But the moment we see a flower, we feel purity inside our heart, clarity in our mind and luminosity in our mind. So here, when I come to Japan, I see the beauty of Japan and the purity of Japan. And Japan gives me a, another ex, and gives me another experience which is so significant in my life. But Japan is a small land composed of a few islands. There are many countries infinitely vaster than Japan. But what does Japan do? Japan embodies the message of the infinite. It is like a tiny drop. You look at the tiny drop, inside the drop you see the ocean. In Japanese, achievements, a tiny island. But inside the tiny island, we see the achievements of the infinite. In any group, at Japan and the achievements of Japan. How many things Japan has created? And as soon as you see inside the inside the drop, inside the flame, you see the sun, the morning sun. In Japan here the sun rises. So this message is unique that Japan offers to the world that inside the finite we can have the infinite, and the infinite can sing in and through the finite. So this is something that Japan is offering to the world at large, which no other country can claim. It is Japan's unparalleled, unique contribution to mankind. で、私が毎回日本に来るたびにとても新鮮な素晴らしい体験をしています。そして多くの人々は何か新しい場所に行ったときに第1回目最初は新鮮な体験をするけれども、第2回目からあまりあの同じような印象は受けない。同じような体験
foolishly or uh, proudly, whatever you want to say, and not act. In the case of Japan, Japan does not talk, Japan acts. Sleeplessly, Japan has been working for the material success you call material prosperity. Now, if you do not have inner awakening, we cannot make progress in any field, whether it is material field or spiritual field. Now, the question comes here, is Japan is spiritual along with uh, if Japan is spiritually awakened along with the material success, I used to say definitely, Japan is growing, Japan's spirituality and Japan's material success are going side by side. A few minutes ago I said about Japan, when I think of Japan and look at Japan, I see a flower. What does flowers, a flower signify? A flower signifies aspiration. When I look at the flower, immediately my good qualities come to the fore. I try to become a good person. Now, as soon as I see Japan, my own aspiration increases. Now, where does this aspiration come from? It comes from the heart that there is an inner hunger not only the mind sangha to become prosperous, but the heart sangha to love the world and offer to the world the good qualities of the heart. So I, I can sincerely tell that the spiritual aspect of Japan, aspect of Japan is also most encouraging most inspiring. Yesterday I visited the Lord Buddha statue in Kamakura. Except a few parts of the world I have visited most of the countries. And I visited countries that love and adore the Lord Buddha. I come from India, Lord Buddha came from India, but his message has been spread infinitely more in foreign lands than its own land in India. But again, there is no such thing as India or Japan or France or Russia. No, there is only one, one home, one world family. So here, if one house has many rooms, if in one room he is not appreciated, which he rightly deserves, if another room, other rooms appreciate him, uh, admire him, adore him, love him, then it is quite uh, appreciable and sufficient. So now to come back, my answer, I have been to many parts of the world where the, you know, the message of Lord Buddha is being followed and adored and his message is being fulfilled. But one statue in Kamakura, when I stand in front of him this, and offer my soulful obeisance, my prayerful love and adoration, I feel that my life has achieved, has seen something and achieved something most, most valued. If one thinks of Japan and one feels Japan is spiritual, with Japanese, I say in, in, most, in my heart's most conviction, then that particular person can stand in front of the statue of 
the wish is no uh, Lord Buddha in front, and the entire spirituality of Japan, that person has to feel inside. The Lord Buddha, the son of Asia, the beloved son of Asia. So, it is very easy for human beings to discredit other nations. It is very difficult to appreciate others. One needs a very powerful heart to appreciate the good qualities of others. Just this morning I wrote, here I would like to read out, the good qualities of Japan. It is indeed a difficult task for some people. This can include world figures to appreciate the lofty achievements of others and other nations. But to an extreme joy, President Gorbachev has not studied at the same school. Therefore, on April 19, 1991, while addressing the Japanese public committee, his heart most beautifully and most hauntingly sang for the souls, for the heart, and for the life of Japan. Beautiful nature, this is his study. Beautiful nature, sakuras in blossom, the organic combination of the past and the present to the visible breakthrough into the futures. Friendly people with strong feeling of self-esteem and respect for others, healthy curiosity and interest in life, the desire to make talents and ambitions a reality. In a world, the Japanese people are a wonderful product of nature and culture. All this is very fascinating and arouses feelings of firm affection. I am glad to have been able to feel the living pulse of your country and to see my own and to see with my own eyes its achievements which have rightfully given Japan a place among the leaders in world progress. So this kind of appreciation you get from President Obama. So here you can see spirituality is being expressed through material success, material prosperity, and outer, uh, you can say, prosperity. The inner beauty is being expressed in outer prosperity. <laughs> ごまんな気分でいてもいいとは誰も他の国の人々にそういうふうに言ったわけではありませんただ特に日本の国民が日本の人々が自分たちで頼まない努力をしていこうとそういうふうに思って日本の国民の人たちが働いて一生懸命働
does not have to go to various places in Japan to find the spirituality in Japan. Kamakura is alone to feed the aspiration of any human being with our spirituality. え、日本を愛する人、日本を理解する人、日本に感銘を受ける人は、日本の家族の家に行かなくてもいいんです。で、例えば鎌倉大仏の前に立って、その人が本当に日本の心を理解する人であれば、それだけでいいんです。ということです
divinity and not make any attempt to destroy her beauty, her divinity, when we are making scientific progress. No, science makes progress, yes, science should make progress, but not by harming, by destroying our mother nature, mother nature. There should be other ways to make scientific researches <coughs> and to expedite scientific progress and not by destroying our mother nature and mother. Earth.